Hello everyone, welcome to Math World. This video is to discuss Cambridge International AS and Air Level Mathematics Paper 3, which is the Pure Mathematics 3 for May June 2024, and the code is 9709-33. So let's move on to question number one. So question number one, solve the equation x to the power of 3 minus 6x equals to 4 times 5 to the power of negative 2x. Give your answer correct to 3 decimal places. So first of all, we need to change it to same base. So the 8 can be expressed as base 2. And same goes to the 4. It can be expressed, expressed as base 2 as well. So 8 is 2 cubed. Then the assisting degree 3 minus 6x. And then the 4 is 2 squared. Okay, multiply with 5 to the power of negative 2x. So now from here, we have, an, we have a formula, a to the power of m, then another degree n outside. This is basically a to the power of mn. Okay, so now here, we will be getting 2, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 6 is 18. So the degree becomes 9 minus 18x, and then left hand side, the 2 power 2 can be moved down. So I will move it down move to the left side, it becomes divide, then equals to 5 to the power of negative 2x. So now, we have another formula, a to the power of m over a to the, a to the power of n, this is a to the power of m minus n. Okay, so now you have to minus the degrees. So which means this is 2 to the power of 9 minus 18x, then minus another x, which is 5 to the power of negative 2x. Okay, then when you simplify, this is 2 to the power of 7, oh, so 9, sorry, this is 2 power 2, so this is not x, this is 2. So 9 minus 2 is 7, then minus 18x equals to 5 to the power of negative 2x. Okay, now you need to get your answer correct to three significant figures. So next step is just take long both sides. So when I take long both sides, I will be getting long. 2 to the power of 7 minus 18x, only one ln is allowed, equals to ln 5 to the power of negative 2x. And then according to the formula, ln a, ln a to the power of b, that is b ln a. So here you will be getting 7 minus 18x ln 2, equals to minus 2x ln 5. Okay, so now to solve means find the x values. So for the left hand side, you need to do expansion. Right, just do expansion. Then I will be getting 7 ln 2 minus 18x ln 2. Then equals to minus 2x ln 5. So the term with the x will be combined together, which means... I will move the minus 17x ln 2 to the right side and factorize the 2. So I will get 7 ln 2 equals to factorize the 2. I factorize the x. You will get 2 ln 5, negative 2 ln 5 plus 18 ln 2. Okay. Then from here, my x will be 7 ln 2 over 18 ln 2 minus 2 ln 5. This is going to be 0 0.5241 and now 3 decimal places. So at last, the answer is 0 0.524. So that is the solution of first question. Okay, question number 2. Find the exact coordinates of the stationary points of the curve y equals to e 2x sine 2x, whereby the x is from 0 to half pi. So now, the stationary points means dy over dx equals to 0. That is the turning point. And now you need to get the exact coordinates. So now, y equals to e 2x sine 2x. This is to differentiate using products rule. So d over dx uv products rule. This is going to be u v prime plus v u prime. So now my u is exponential 2x. 
Then now my u prime is e two x. Differential e two x is two. Okay, and then v is sine two x. When you differentiate sine, that is cos. So my v prime sine change to cos. Rewrite the two x, and then differentiate the two x becomes two. So you will be getting two cos two x. And now my dy dx is u v prime. So u v prime cross multiplication. I'll get e two x times two cos two x plus two e two x times sine two x. Now the common term is two exponential x. Okay, that is the common term. So I will factorize the common term, which is two e two x. Then you will get cos two x plus sine two x. So when dy dx equals to zero, that means either the first term equals to zero or the bracket equals to zero because multiplication of two terms equals to zero means one of them must be zero. Okay, but then two e two x cannot be zero because the exponential graph is always above the axis. Now, therefore, cos two x plus sine two x must be zero. So to solve this, just divide the whole equation by cos two x. Then you will get one plus tangent two x equals to zero. Sine two x over cos two x is tangent two x. Therefore, from here, tangent two x equals to minus one. Now look at the x value. The x is defined for first quadrant, zero to hundred, zero to pi over two. Right. And then now we are solving tangent 2x. So get the interval for 2x. It will be from 0 to pi. So now tangent is negative when 0 to pi, which means the angle is in second quadrant. So now here I will write basic angle equals to inverse tangent of 1. That is pi over 4, which means here acute angle is pi over 4. But now my my x is basically on the other side. This is my 2x. So means which means right my 2x is pi minus 3 pi, uh, pi minus pi over 4. That means this is 3 over 4 pi. Then now here my x is going to be 3 over 8 pi. Right? So now the question says exact coordinates of the stationary points means that we need to find the y value. So when x equals to 3 over 8 pi, your y equals to exponential 2x sine 2x. So exponential 2x then sine 2x. So this is going to be e 3 over 4 pi sine 3 over 4 pi. So sine 3 over 4 pi is basically 1 over square root 2, or you can write square root 2 over 2. So I write e 3 over 4 pi times square root 2 over 2. Okay, so which is square root 2 over 2 e 3 over 4 pi. That is my y coordinate. That means now my stationary point We'll have the coordinates of 3 over 8 pi, then square root 2 over 2, exponential 3 over 4 pi. So done for this question. Question number 3. The square roots of 24 minus 7i can be expressed in the Cartesian form a plus yi, where, a, where x and y are real and exact. So by first forming a quadratic equation in x or y, find the square roots of 24 minus 7i in exact Cartesian form. Okay, so now I will write let square root of 24 minus 7i be x minus iy. I will follow the, the imaginary parts here. If it's minus, then I will write minus. Okay, so now here I will square both sides to eliminate the square root. So now 
Square and square root will be cancelled off from the left hand side. So left hand side left 24 minus 7i. Right hand side just do expansion using quadratic formula. So a minus b squared, that is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Then you will be getting the answer of x squared minus 2xyi plus i squared y squared. So i squared is minus 1. That means, right, this is minus 1. So it means that the third term is basically minus y squared. So then you will be getting equals to x squared minus y squared as the real part. And then the imaginary part will be minus 2xyi. And now, here I compare the real and imaginary parts. Therefore, 24 is x squared minus y squared. This is my first equation. Then minus 7 equals to minus 2xy. Then from here, I can get my y. My y will be 7 over 2x. That's my second equation. Now to find the x and y, I eliminate the y first. So that's why I get the y as a subject. And that is my second equation. So now I substitute second equation into first equation. So therefore, 24 equals to x squared minus square of 7 over 2x. Then this is going to be x squared minus 49 over 4x squared equals to 24. So times whole equation by 4x squared. Okay, therefore, you will be getting 24 times 4, that is 96. Then x squared equals to 4x squared times x squared, 4x degree 4, then minus 49. And now here, I will be getting the quartic equation. Quartic equation means the x with degree 4. So move the 96x squared to the other side because negative 96, 96x squared minus 49 equals to 0. So that's why in the question is mentioned, find form the quartic equation. So quartic equation means x degree 4. So now, this quartic equation, since this is degree 4, you still can factorize it. But then instead of x squared, right, x times x now becomes x squared times x squared. So 4x degree 4, it will be 2x squared times 2x squared. Then the 49, right, it can be 49 times 1 or 7 times 7. So look at the sign here, the symbol here. Minus times plus will be minus. Means that I will have 1 minus and 1 plus. Therefore, I will write here, now you look at here, this is minus 96. So I need to get more negative. That means now here, I will write here as minus 49 times plus 1. Because minus 49 times 2, that is minus 98. The x squared. Then here is plus 2x squared. So the first column, when you times, you get 4x degree 4. Last column, when you times, that is minus 49. Second column, when you plus, it will be minus 96x squared. Okay, so same equations. What you do is, the factors will be just a cross multiplication. That means now here, I will be getting 2x squared plus 1, multiplied with 2x squared minus 49, equals to 0. So either 2x squared plus 1 equals to 0, or 2x squared minus, minus 49 equals to 0. Which means now here, I will either get x squared equals to negative half, which is undefined, because we know that when you refer to the complex number x minus i, y, x and y are real. Okay, real means it cannot be negative for square, for square number. So now, for the second expression, it will be x squared equals to 49 over 2. So your x will be plus minus square root 49 over 2 then you will be getting plus minus 7 over square root 2. So to, to rationalize the denominator, the square root of the denominator, you times square root 2 over square root 2. Therefore, you are getting plus minus 7 square root 2 over 2. So here I get 2x, right? So now, when x equals to 7 over 2 square root 2, which is a positive value, I need to find out my y value. So my y value, I can get it from the second equation. So I will write from second, y is 
7 over 2x. That means this is 7 over 2. Right, from here, basically, you can say 2x equals to 7 square root 2. So here, I will write 7 square root 2. That is my 1 over square root 2 here. Okay, again, this can be rationalized. So you multiply square root 2 over 2, then you will be getting square root 2 over 2. That is my y value when the x is 7 over 2, square root 2. Now, same goes to the next x value, which is a negative. So basically, this is going to be just substitute here directly. So 7 over negative 7 square root 2. That means here is going to be 1 over square root 2 times square root 2 over 2. Negative. That is negative square root 2 over 2. Okay. So now I will write square root of the complex number 24 minus 7i. I have define this as x minus i y okay look at here x minus i y so therefore be careful with this now your x is 7 over 2 root 2 your y is positive but then since i let it be x minus i y that means it should be 7 over 2 root 2 minus root 2 over 2 i another one is negative value negative x so you minus minus the minus minus root 2 over 2 that is plus square root 2 over 2 i so these are the two square roots of the complex number okay next question the variables x and y satisfy the equation ky equals to exponential cx where k and c are constants, given the graphs, the graph ln y against x, and given two points. Now, find the values of k and c, give each value correct to two significant figures. So, ky equals to ecx. And now you are sketching ln y against x. So, you need to take ln both sides. ln ky equals to ln ecx. Now, for ln ab, this is same as ln A plus ln B. Okay, for the right side, ln, C, ln EC, that is C. So, which means I can simplify, I can just split the right side. Okay, instead of one term, I split it into two terms. That is ln K plus ln Y. Then the right side is just CX. And now I get the ln Y as a subject. So, ln Y equals to CX minus ln K. That means this is my Y m x plus c and now to get the k and c so your k is basically the long k negative long k is a y intercept then the c is a gradient right so now given two points so points 2.80 and 0 0.372 so the 2.80 is actually the x and then the 0 0.32 372 is actually the ln y. Okay, so from here, from the first point, I will get just direct replace. This is x. Okay, this is x. This is ln y. So you sub substitute into this equation, the previous equation. That means I'll get 0 0.372 equals to 2.80x, sorry, 2.80c minus ln k. This is my first equation. Now, my second equation, I refer to the second point. Second point, 5.10 and 2.21. So, 5.10, 2.21. So, now, and again, replace it, the values. So, here, I will be getting, again, this is x and ln y, right? So, here, you will be getting 2.21 equals to 5.10c minus ln k. So these are the two equations. So I notice that I have minus ln k in both equations 1 and 2. So the easiest way to eliminate the k is by subtracting these two equations. So I will use the second equation, subtract 
or minus the first equation. Left hand side 2.21 minus 0 0.372 that is 1.838. And then for the right side 5.10c minus 2.80c you get 2.30c. Okay then the ln k will be cancel off once you minus it. Therefore my c is 1.838 over 2.30 then you will be getting 0 0.7991 and now let's look at the question you need two significant figures therefore now round up two significant figures you refer to the third so round up it becomes 0 0.80 okay now to get the k you can use the first equation or second equation so i will refer to first equation so from first 2.21 equals to 5.10 times 0. Point. Now, the C, I will not use the final answer, but I will use the previous value. 7991 minus ln K. So, obviously, your ln K is... Okay, I refer to first equation, sorry. I refer to first equation, so this is 0. 0.3. 72 equals to 2.80 c minus ln k so now my ln k is basically just move the negative ln k to the left side and this 0 0.372 move to the right side which means i will be getting 2.80 0 0.7991 minus 0 0.372 and this is going to be 1.8648 1.86548. So to get the k, right, to eliminate the ln, we have this formula. E ln a is a. So which means now you introduce the e. So e ln k. So the ln k becomes the power of the e now. It will be e 1.86548. Therefore, k equals to 6.459. And now, we need two significant figures for the k value as well. Therefore, it's 6.5. So done for this question. Okay, next question number five. Express the rational function in partial fraction. Partial fractions. So for partial fractions, it's compulsory to check whether the function is proper or improper. Okay, so this is obviously is improper rational function because when you do expansion for a denominator, the degree of x, the highest degree of x is 2, but then the numerator also highest degree is 2, right? Highest degree of x. Therefore, now I need to do expansion for denominator before I, exp before I divide by polynomial division. So when you do expansion for denominator, you will be getting... 2x squared. Okay, I copy the question first. So it will be 2x squared minus x minus 1. Then now I divide. So now to get 6x squared from 2x squared, multiply by 3. So that is 6x squared minus 3x minus 3. Then when you minus, first term becomes 0, second term minus 2x plus 3x, that is 1x. 2 minus minus 3 is plus 5. So this is going to be 3 plus x plus 5 over brackets x minus 1 brackets 2x plus 1. Okay, so now we need to find the partial fractions based on the rational function. So therefore, x plus 5 over x minus 1 multiply with 2x plus 1. That will be a over x minus 1 plus b over 2x plus 1. So now to get the same denominator as on the left side, I need to multiply the first term, which is the a over x minus 1 by 2x plus 1, so that you are getting the same denominator. Okay, same goes to the b over 2x plus 1. So I need to multiply with x minus 1 over x minus 1. And now since I'm getting all the same denominators, that means just 
ignore the denominators and consider all the numerators. Now let the factor be 0. So I will let the first factor be 0, which is 2x plus 1 be 0. That means now your x equals to minus half. So when x equals to minus half, substitute into the previous equation. Then I will be getting minus half plus 5 equals to b of minus half minus 1. So from here, you will be getting 9 over 2 equals to negative 3 over 2b. And at last, your b is minus 3. Okay, and now let the other factor, which is x minus 1, be 0. Obviously, your x equals to 1. And now, according to this equation, it will be 1 plus 5 equals to a bracket 2 times 1 plus 1. So, now 1 plus 5 is 6. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. So, 3a, which means now your a is 2. Okay, so now you rewrite your partial fractions. So x plus 5 over x minus 1 and then 2x plus 1. That is going to be 2 over x minus 1 minus 3. Okay, because of b is minus 3. So we never write plus and minus 3. So just simplify into minus 3, then 2x plus 1. Now this is a partial fractions for x plus 5 over the two factors. But then your original question is basically 3 plus this. All right. So now I have to rewrite the question. Just copy the question and add on the 3 to the existing partial fractions. So therefore, 6x squared minus 2x plus 2 over these two brackets equals to 3 plus these two terms. Okay, so that's the solution of this question. Okay, next question, number 6a. On an argon diagram, shade the region whose points represent complex numbers z, which satisfy both the inequalities. So the first inequality is actually a circle. Okay, because you have one modulus and less equals to a number. So now I have to change to general form. You minus a plus bi. So the a plus bi is basically 4 plus 3i here. Less equals to 2. So basically, this is a circle with center coordinates for 3. And then the radius of the circle is basically 2 because of less equals to 2. Okay, so now here for the other argument, argument z minus 2 minus i, critter equals to pi over 3. This is argument z minus bracket 2 plus i. Then I get the point, the reference point with coordinates 2, 1, because 2 plus 1, i. Okay, and then now I can sketch, or I can just sketch, yeah, sketch the two circles, I mean two locus, or what we call as loci, right? So I need radius 4, 3, I mean I need center 4, 3, and radius 2. So now... It will be positive. So this is my real axis. This is my imaginary axis. Okay, 4, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. This is my center of the circle. But because the radius is 2, means that I need 2 more units. 5, 6. Then 1, 2, 3. 3, so 2 units from 4, that is 2. Go up, 2 units. And then go down, 2 units. And now join these 4 points using, I mean, draw a line, or draw a circle to get a, yeah, draw a circle. All this will be the circumference.
Okay, so try your best to draw a smooth circle. Okay, let's say this is a circle. Here is 6. Right? So maybe I just adjust my labeling here a bit. So here 6. Okay. Then this is 5. Right, so now radius is 2. So I will label this as modulus z minus 4 minus 3i equals to 2 because there's a circumference. But then here less equals to means all the region inside the circle. Now another line is the argument line. So the reference point is at 2, 1. So x is 2, y is 1. This is the reference point. Then probably I use this. Okay, and look at here, that is equal sign. So now, okay, this is 2, 1. Okay, and then I should use dotted line. So it's actually touching the circle at 4, 1, okay, because it is 2 units. Here is 2 units. The radius is 2 units here. And then the angle is pi over 3. Pi over 3 is actually 60 degrees, right? So 60 degrees means that it will be 60 degrees. Okay, here is 2, right? Sixty degrees it will be roughly like this. Here is pi over three. Okay, so this line less equals greater equals to pi over three. So that means now it will be above this line and then inside the circle. So obviously the region is going to be this part. This is argument z minus two minus i equals to pi over 3. So this is how we draw the locus. Okay, so done for the first part. Okay, done. Now, B, calculate the greatest value of argument Z for the points in this region. So, argument is actually counted from the... Because you see argument Z means that Z minus 0 plus 0 I. So, it is counted from the origin. Okay, so now, the greatest points is basically... Right, the greatest argument means that the... The... What is that called? The angle okay the angle so from here i will say that the greatest angle is basically okay let me check okay maybe my circle i have to redraw a bit this one's supposed to be like that okay circle Right, so I adjust a bit my circle. So this is more accurate. So for you, please draw using the coins or you can just use, yeah, you can just use the coins to draw the circle. Okay, so for your information, the greatest argument that means all the points here, right, on the circumference of the circle here at the shaded region. All this will be the points that including inside. So now I need to find out the largest, the greatest argument. So the greatest argument is basically here. Which is touching. OK, 
okay, you should draw a straight line over here, which is just touching the circumference of the circle. Okay, this is the straight line. Right? So that means I need to find out what is this argument. Okay, so this argument, you can just check because we know that from zero, the origin, to the center. Right? I can find what is this angle as theta. Then I just need to find out what is my alpha over here. Maybe I just draw again this one. Because it's actually touching. Just use ruler and join the points. Make sure it is a straight line over here. Okay, this is a straight line. Just touching a point on the circle. Okay, then from here, since it is touching, means that you can join to center. And here is 90 degrees because that is the tangent. I would say that is the tangent. Okay, so now I know that this here is my radius, two units. I need to find out what is my alpha. So my critter's argument z is actually theta plus alpha from the argon diagram. Okay, so now here, I need to know that, or I know that, this center is with coordinates 4, 3. So, the center is, at, is with coordinates 4, 3. Okay, then now I can write distance between, I need to find out the alpha, so I need two lengths. Another length is from the 0, 0 and the 4, 3. So that's why I will write now, I will calculate the distance first between the origin and 4, 3. So the distance formula is basically, let's say here, A with x1, y1, and then B is with x2, y2. So the distance formula is square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Therefore, now I will just write this is square root of 4 minus 0 squared plus 3 minus 0 squared. That is uh, square root of 25, which is 5. Okay, so now I know that this length is 5. Okay, here, this is 5. And then, now, the triangle Okay, look at here. This is 90 degrees. Here is 90 degrees because of tangent. Okay, touches. So, 90 degrees. 90 degrees to the 4, 3. Okay, so 90 degrees. Let me see here is 90 degrees to 4, 3. This is 4, 3. And then the longest side is here is 0. So, it means that this is 0, 0. So, I know that from 4, 3, right, 4, 3 to the 90 degrees, that is 2 units because it's, that is the radius of the circle. So from 4, 3 to the 90 degrees, this is 2 units. Right, the distance between 0, 0 and 4, 3, that means this hypotenuse is 5. So now the angle is over here, which is, this is my alpha. So that means my alpha, right, so I have opposite and hypotenuse. Therefore, this is inverse sine 2 over 5. So now I need to know what is my theta. My theta is the argument of 4, 3. So theta equals the argument of 4 plus 3i. Since obviously from the diagram, I know that this 4, 3, which is the center, is on the positive side, right? The axis, I mean the real parts and imaginary parts are positive. Therefore, I can just direct use the uh, inverse tangent formula. So it will be 
inverse tangent of 3 over 4. And now the question says calculate the critter's argument. So which means now the critter's argument equals to theta plus alpha. Okay, then here it will be inverse tangent or arc tangent 3 over 4 plus arc sine 2 over 5. Then you will be getting 1.055 or 1.06 which is correct to 3 significant figures. So that is the critter's argument Z. Next question, number 7. Given fx, show that x plus 7 is a factor of fx. So for this, we need to refer to the factor theorem. So I will let x plus 7 be 0. That means your x equals to 7. So now substitute 7 into your fx. So your fx is 8x cubed plus 54x squared minus 17x minus 21. That means... Your F7 is 8 times 7 cubed plus 54 times 7 squared minus 17 times 7 minus 21. Then you will be getting 0. So, therefore, X plus 7 is a factor of Fx. So, that's all for the proving. Okay, now find the quotient when fx is divided by x plus 7. So now I will perform long division. It's x cubed plus 54x squared minus 17x minus 21. Divided by x plus 7. So in order to get 8x cubed from x, I need to multiply with 8x squared. So here 8x squared, you get 8x cubed, 8x times 7 plus 56x squared. Then minus, right? So first term will be 0. Second term, 54 minus 56, that is minus 2x squared. Bring down minus 17x. To get minus 2x squared from x times by minus 2x. So you will get minus 2x squared minus 14x. And now again you subtract. So first term will be 0. Second term minus 17x minus minus 14x is plus. So minus 17 plus 14 that is minus 3x. Then minus 21. So now times by negative 3. So you get negative 3x minus 21. Therefore your quotient is the quadratic function which is 8x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now, hence, has means use the previous answer. Okay, use the previous answer and solve. So now you compare with the previous question. So 8x cos cubed plus 54 cos squared data minus 17 cos theta minus 21 equals to 0. So now you compare with previous question. Okay, so previous question basically, right, when you refer to the parts B, is basically divisor times quotient equals to this, right? So I will just write the original function first. Original function was this. Okay, so from second part, the cubic equation, that means the equation in terms of power 3, which is in terms of x as well, from the long division, polynomial division, I will get x is x squared minus 2x minus 3 multiplied with x plus 7 equals to 0. Okay, so from the part B, not from 2, from B. So when you compare the first and the second, 
obviously your x is cos theta so compare right that means your x is cos theta that's why here hence hence means use the part b answer which means i can say that you are getting 8 cos squared theta minus 2 cos theta minus 3 then multiply with cos theta plus 7 equals to 0 and the quadratic equation can be factorized so instead of x you change to cos theta now okay so 8 cos squared theta is actually you can write 4 cos squared theta times 4 cos theta times 2 cos theta or 8 cos theta times 1 cos theta up to it depends on the question so now from here since here is minus times with plus it will be minus here and i need to get minus for the middle term later on right after you add after you add up so it means that here is 1 this is minus 3 so i will get this is 4 cos theta here is minus 6 cos theta which means the first column i will get 8 cos squared theta when you multiply third column i'll get minus 3 but second column when i add up i will be getting negative 2 cos theta so here minus 2 cos theta okay which means now my my factors you just cross multiply so that means my factors will be 4 cos theta minus 3 and another one is 2 cos theta plus 1 then together with the last factor and then the question asking for solving right the theta is between 0 and 360 degrees which means now I will get the first factor be 0 so 4 cos theta minus 3 equals to 0 which means cos theta equals to 3 over 4 okay or 2 cos theta plus 1 equals to 0 that means your cos theta equals to minus 1 or cos theta plus 7 equals to 0 so cos theta equals to minus 7 this one no solution because the cos theta is between 0 uh, is between 1 and minus 1 it cannot be minus 7 and now your theta is defined from 0 to 360 degrees okay which means the first value is positive for cos so it will be in second and fourth quadrant okay sorry a positive for cos so it will be first quadrant okay and then last quadrant and then for the cos theta is minus one i will just use oh sorry it's not minus one two cos theta plus one is zero it means that it is negative half All right that means cos theta is negative which means your angle will be in second and third quadrant Okay, so now when cos theta is 3 over 4, I will write down my basic angle. That is inverse cos 3 over 4. Then you will be getting 41.4 degrees. Okay, then for the cos theta is negative half, my basic angle equals to at cos half, that is 60 degrees. Okay, so now when you look at the domain here for the theta, it is from 0 to 360 degrees. It means that this is my first angle. Okay, and then my second angle is going to be here, the green color. So the other one, first angle is green color and the second angle is the orange color. Because it will be positive for the theta, which means now my theta, first angle is 41.4 second is 360 minus 41.4 that is 318.6 okay then here theta equals to firstly green color that is 120 because 180 minus 60 and then the third one will be 180 plus 60 that is 240 
Okay, so final answer, just combine all these four values. So that's the solution of this question. Next question number 8a. Express 3 cos 2x minus square root 3 sin 2x in the form r cos 2x plus alpha. Where r is greater than 0, alpha is from 0 to half pi. Give the exact values of r and alpha. So now, when here is cos, this is cos, that means my 3 is the a. Okay, because we have a cos 2x plus b sin 2x, right? So now my r is basically square root of 3 square plus minus square root 3 squared. That is going to be square root of 9 plus 3. Then I get square root 12. Now you need to get exact value for r. For the 12 is basically 4 times 3. Okay, so square root 4 is 2, then left 2 square root 3. Because we have this formula, square root ab equals to square root a times square root b. That is my exact value for of the r. Now my alpha value is basically inverse tangent, the square root 3 over 3. Then this is inverse tangent square root 3 over 3 is basically pi over 6. Therefore, 3 cos 2x minus square root 3 sine 2x is 2 square root 3 cos 2x plus pi over 6. So that's the solution of part A. Now B, hence, has misused the previous answer. Find the exact value for this integration. Now basically the denominator is the form that we have solved. Right, exactly the same. Therefore, I will replace the denominator by 2 square root 3 cos 2x plus pi over 6. So firstly, I copy the question. You integrate from 1 to pi over 12. And now replace the denominator by the harmonic form that we have solved just now. That is 2 square root 3 cos 2x plus pi over 6. Okay. So now when you bring in the square to 2 root 3, that is basically 2 square is 4, root 3 square is 3, 4 times 3 is 12. So I will write equals to 3 over 12 because I factorize the 3 in the numerator as well. So this one I took out as well after you square it. Therefore, this is integrate 0 to pi over 12, 1 over the square move into the cos. It will be cos squared 2x plus pi over 6. Okay, 1 over cos squared is basically second squared. So the 3 over 12, I can change to 1 over 4. Then now you integrate second square 2x plus pi over 6 dx. Now, for your information, when we differentiate tangent, Okay, x or tangent mx plus b, that is m second square mx plus b, which means if you integrate the right side, so integrate second square mx plus b dx, so this m I will move to the other side, that will be 1 over m tangent mx plus b then plus c. Okay, that is the reverse process because the integration is a reverse process of integration. So this is how we integrate second square. So which means now here, when I integrate second square, I will be getting tangent. 
then rewrite 2x plus pi over 6, and then divide by 2, because you differentiate 2x, that is 2, together with limits. Okay, now the 2 you can factorize and combine with the 4. Therefore, this is 1 over 8. So I will get 1 over 8, then replace the x by pi over 12. So you will be getting tangent 2 pi over 12 plus pi over 6. Then you minus tangent 0 plus pi over 6, that is pi over 6. So here, it will be 1 over 8 tangent, now, 2 over half, 2 over 12 is actually 1 over 6. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, 2 over 6, right? So you will get 2 over 6 pi minus tangent 1 over 6 pi. So now, the question says exact interval, I mean exact value for the integration. So now, you get the in, uh, exact value for tangent 2 over 6 pi. 2 over 6 pi is basically pi over 3. So tangent pi over 3 is square root 3. Tangent pi over 6, you will be getting square root 3 over 3. Okay, so now get the same denominator, which means probably I will simplify first. This is 1 square root 3 minus 1 over 3 square root 3. That is 2 over 3 square root 3. So at last, right, the 2 and 8 will be simplified. This is 4. So I will get square root 3 over 4, uh, over 12. So that is my exact integration. Okay, question number nine. A container in the shape of a cuboid has a square base of x, the side x, and the height of 10, point, 10 minus x is given that x varies with time, where time is greater than zero. The container decreases in volume at a rate which is inversely proportional to t. Okay, so whenever you see rate, this is d over dt. So volume, but decreases means minus. Right, so now here it will be a negative value. So now show x and t satisfy this with all this value, all this information. When t equals to one over ten, x is half. Rate of decrease of x. So rate of decrease of x means dx over dt equals to negative twenty over thirty-seven because of decrease. So now you need to show the dx dt, and you are given. The dv dt is inversely proportional to t. So I will write dv over dt is inversely proportional to t. That means it's negative 1 over t. Negative is because of decrease. Okay, this is negative. So inversely proportional means 1 over t. Therefore, from here, I will write dv over dt equals to k of negative 1 over t which is negative k over t. Okay, so now we need to get the dv dt. That means you are given the dv dt information. That means we need to get the expression for v. So now since the v is, I mean, has a square base, so the volume is base area times height. That is x, x, 10 minus x. So means that now my volume is x times x times 10 minus x. Therefore, you will be getting x squared times 10 minus x. That is 10x cubed minus, sorry, sorry, this is 10x squared minus x cubed. Okay, so since this is a v, you know, v equals to 10x squared minus x cubed. So now from here, you are given dx dt, dv dt, so I can find dv dx. So then dv dx, it will be, when you differentiate, you bring down the 2 combined with the 10, that is 20x. Then the 3 move down, it will be negative 3x squared. So with this, I can just use the chain rule because we need to show dx dt. So I will write my dx dt equals to dx over dv because you have dv dx here times dv over dt. Okay, so... 
For your information, dx over dv is same as 1 over dv over dx. So that means I will take 1 over of this expression. Then now my dv dt already found negative k over t. Okay, so you need to get the unknown because in the dx dt there is no k. So use these values to get the k value. So k equals t equals to 1 over 10, x equals to half. t equals to 1 over 10, x equals to half. Right? And at the same time, your dx dt, rate of decrease of x, dx dt is negative 20 over 37. So here I will write dx dt equals to negative 20 over 37. So now substitute all these values into the previous expression, then you can find the k. So now I will write negative 20 over 7 equals to 1 over 20, x is half minus 3 times half squared. Then you multiply with minus k over t is 1 over 10. Then from here, I will get negative 20. Okay, the negative will be cancelled off. I don't want to write negative anymore. So the negative cancel off from both sides. So then I will get 20 over 7 equals to 1 over the total of the denominator here, this denominator that is 37 over 4. We just calculate. Now, for the second term, 1 over 1 over 10, that is going to be 10. K. And now, this step is to get the K value. So, from here, right, my K value, what to do is, this K, first of all, this whole term move up, Okay, and then the zero cancel off. So I direct get a k, which means my k is basically 2 over 7 times 37 over 4. Then now you will be getting 1 over 2. Okay, let me check. Did I write? Oh, I have written wrongly. This is negative 20 over 37. 3, 7. Okay, that's why the 37 cancel off. Half and 2 and 4 becomes half. So that is how I get the K. So once you get the K, just need to rewrite. Okay, so from here, I will just write side by side. Therefore, my dx dt substitute back into this. So from first, my dx dt equals to 1 over 20x minus 3x squared multiplied with the k is negative half. So negative 1 over 2 divided by t. That means the negative 1 over 2 divided by t is actually negative 2t. Okay, negative 1 over 2t, sorry, negative 1 over 2t. So then here is going to be negative 1 over, okay, I write, is negative 1 over the 2t you write first. Let, let's look at here. Write the 2t first before the x. So here I will get 2t bracket 20x minus 3x squared. So that is the dx dt. We have shown this. Okay, done for this question. Now, pass B, solve the differential equation obtaining t in terms of x. So now I will copy this expression, dx dt equals to negative 1 over 2t times 20x minus 3x squared. And now we need to get t as a t as the subject, right? t in terms of x. So which means I will, okay, look at here. This is dx, means that all my x should be moved to the left side. Then my dt will move to right side. So now I will be getting 20x minus 3x squared dx. That equals to the negative half, negative 1 over 2t, the negative half, I can take it out. 
just left the 1 over t. Then dt, and now I integrate both sides. Okay, so for the left-hand side, when you need to integrate, basically you are using integrate x and dx. This is x to the power of m plus 1 over m plus 1, then plus c. That is the formula for integration of left-hand side. I will get 20x squared over 2 minus 3x cubed over 3. Then for the right-hand side, the negative half, okay, integrate t. So integrate t means integrate fx. I mean fx in the denominator because this fx with degree 1. Then we have to use the ln formula. This is ln fx plus c. So which means here t degree 1. So when you differentiate t degree 1, that is t with respect to t. Therefore, here is going to be ln t. Then a plus c on the right side. Okay, so now simplify the first term. 20 over 2, this is basically 10. Then the 3 cancel off. So basically, our solution is 10x squared minus x cubed equals to negative half ln t plus c. Now, firstly, we need to get the t. Uh, we need to get the c before we get the t. So I need to use back these two values. Okay, t equals to 1 over 10, x equals to half. So here, you will get t equals to 1 over 10, x equals to half, then 10 times half squared minus half cubed. That is minus half ln 1 over 10 plus c. And now my c, okay, so... When you simplify these two terms, you will be getting 19 over 8. So I get 19 over 8 and the minus half ln 1 over 10 move to the other side becomes plus. So I leave my answer in the exact form first and then I substitute this result into the previous solution. So that means now 10x squared minus x cubed equals to minus half ln t plus 19 over 8 plus half ln 1 over 10. And now according to the question, we need to get the t in terms of x, which means now I keep the, I move this to the other side to get positive. Okay, and then or probably before I move, I just times the whole equation by 8 first because I have the denominator of 8. So I times the whole equation by 8, then you will get 80x squared minus 8x cubed equals to minus 4 ln t plus 19 plus 4 ln 1 over 10. So then the 4 ln t will be moved to the left side and the rest of the terms move to the right side. So I will be getting 4 ln t equals to 19 plus 4 ln 1 over 10 minus 80x squared plus 8x cubed. Then now, divide the whole equation by 4. So ln t equals to 1 over 4 of everything. Okay, so then from here, I will say to get the t, I take e both sides, right? So e ln t equals to e 1 over 4 of 19 plus 19 plus 4 ln 1 over 10 minus 80x squared plus 8x cubed. Okay, I noticed that the 1 over 4, you can simplify with the second, third, and fourth term. So, I will just times it in. It will be 19 over 4 plus ln 1 over 10 minus 20x squared plus 2x cubed. Okay, then now here we have one formula. Uh, e ln a is a. And then at the same time, e a plus b is e a times e b. Okay, so for the left hand side, e ln t, I will just write t. And then I notice that the e and the ln here can be simplified. But before that, I split it first. 
So, which means I will be getting e ln 1 over 10 times e 19 over 4 minus 20x squared plus 2x cubed. Okay, then from here, the e ln 1 over 10 is basically 1 over 10. Then e, the exponential of the rest. So 19 over 4 minus 20x squared plus 2x cubed. That is my t. So this is the expression of t in terms of x. Alright, so done for this question. Now, next question is question number 10. So the equations of two straight lines, so you are given two straight lines here, where A is a constant. First part, given that the acute angle between the directions of these lines is 1 over 4 pi, find the possible values of A. So now, basically, for your R1, okay, first line, I let it be R1. R1, the fixed point, this is the position vector of fixed point, it will be 1i, 1j, 2ak. So I will get 1, 1, 2a. And then plus with lambda, 3i, 4j, ak. So 3, 4a. This is my R1. So from the R1, I can get the direction vector of B1. That is 3, 4a. Because this is a fixed point, this is a direction vector. Now, for my R2, then you will be getting minus 3i minus 1j 4k. So minus 3 minus 1, 4. So minus 3 minus 1, 4 will be the position vector of the fixed point plus mu. Then the direction vector is minus 1i 2j 2k. So minus 1, 2, 2. So I will define my b2 as minus 1, 2, 2. Okay, so with this, now... Basically, if you have two straight lines, L1, L2, then here you will have B1 and B2. So, for your information, the angle between two lines, theta, which is also the angle between the two direction vectors. So, from here, and from here, the acute angle is given, pi over 4. Okay, so which means... From the scalar products formula, B1 dot B2, that is magnitude B1, magnitude B2, cos pi over 4. Then from here, you are expected to get the A, which means now I get 3, 4, A dot minus 1, 2, 2 equals to the, the magnitude of the matrix, oh, sorry, magnitude of the vector is 3 square plus 4 square plus a square. Okay, magnitude of the vector B2. That is going to be minus 1 square plus 2 square plus 2 square. Cos pi over 4 is basically square root 2 over 2. So for the left hand side, the scalar products, you just times and plus all the product. So I will get minus 3. 4 times 2 is 8, so plus 8. 2 times a is 2a. Then equals to square root. So 3 square plus 4 square is 25. Then plus a squared. The other one is 1 square, uh, I mean minus 1. You square of minus 1 is 1. 1 plus 4 plus 4, that is 9. Okay, then after that, square root 2 over 2. Then from here, the left hand side minus 3 plus 8 is 5 plus 2a. So for the right hand side, I can just combine all because we have this formula. Into, uh, square, root, square root of ab is square root a times square root b. Right? So then you can just combine all. So that means now here, I will get square root of 25 plus a square and then this 9 times 2, so 18, then divided by 2. So now I can times the whole equation by 2 because I need to find 2a values. See, the question says the possible values, most likely it will be 2a. So now here, it will be 10 plus 4a equals to square root of, so 18 times 25, you are getting 450. Then 18 times a squared, you get 18a squared. Now, to get the a or to eliminate the square root, 
I will square both sides. So I square both sides. So the square and square root cancel off for the right hand side. Now for the left hand side, when you square it, it becomes 100 plus 80a plus 16a squared. Then the right hand side just rewrite the two terms. And then now here, you just rearrange it to get the quadratic equation. So since the 18a squared is greater than 16a squared on the left side, so I will move all the terms to the right hand side in order to get the positive a squared. I mean the positive co coefficient of a squared. So I will get 18a squared plus 450 minus 100 minus 80a minus 16a squared equals to 0. So first and last term, when you simplify, that is 2a squared. Then minus 80a, 450 minus 100 is plus 350. That equals to 0. Now, for this equation, you can just divide <coughs> the whole You may, <coughs> you may divide the whole equation by 2. Therefore, a squared minus 40a plus 175 equals to 0. And this can be factorized. Okay, You can just factorize no, uh, manually or just use a calculator. So a times a, a squared. 175 is basically 35 times 5. Or you have any other, you have other, factors as well but when you look at here minus minus is a plus so it means that both will be minus therefore I will choose 35 and 5 okay so when you multiply 5 with negative 35 with the a you get negative 35 a you multiply negative 5 with a that is negative 5 a so first column you get a squared last column is 175 positive and then the middle column when you plus together that is minus 40 a so therefore, I will be getting the factors, right? I'll be getting factors of a minus 5 and a minus 35 equals to 0. Therefore, either my a minus 5 equals to 0 or a minus 35 equals to 0, which means my a equals to 5 or 35. Okay, so let's see any restrictions. It's just mentioned that the a is constant. Right, therefore, this is your solution for the A. Now, given instead the lines intersect, find the value of A, means now one answer, and the position vector of the points of intersection. So, where intersections means R1 equals to R2. That is intersecting. So now just use this R1 and R2, equip them and open the brackets. So the first one I will get 1 plus 3 lambda. Second is 1 plus 4 lambda, then 2a plus lambda a. Okay, write down, write down all the IJK components. So 1 plus 3 lambda, 1 plus 4 lambda, and then 2a plus a lambda. That will be my R1. Therefore, my R2, okay, so refer to this straight line, open the brackets and times the direction vector of B2 with the mu. So you, at last, you will be getting minus 3 minus mu, minus 1 plus 2 mu, and then 4 plus 2 mu. So let it be first three equations. Right? So now, to find the intersection points, we just need to find either lambda or mu. Okay? Now, it's given that you need to find A, which means I will reserve the third equation. Okay? Don't use the third equation because third equation, you have lambda, mu, and A. So I have to find both lambda and mu because you need to find the A first. Now, from the third equation, we need to find... We need to... To get the a, you need to know the lambda and mu. So I will use the first two equations. But for first two equations, there is no common term for the lambda and mu. Therefore, I will just times the first equation by 2. Then it will be, I will be getting minus 2 mu on the right side. So then you will be getting 2 plus 6 lambda 
equals to minus 6 minus 2 mu. Let this be fourth equation. So now my first becomes fourth. So I will solve second and fourth. Okay. So now when you look at the 2 mu from both equations, from second equation that is plus. From fourth equation that is minus. So to eliminate the mu, I will plus these two equations together. So second plus fourth equation. So left hand side, you will be getting 3 plus 10 lambda. Right hand side is basically just minus 7. That means 10 lambda equals to minus 7. The 3 on the left side will be moved to right side. So minus 7 minus 3, that is minus 10. So then your lambda is minus 1. Now, to get the mu, I can just refer to first, second, or fourth equation. So I will refer to first equation. So it means that 1 plus 3 times minus 1 equals to minus 3 minus mu. Okay, then my mu, I will just move it to the left side and all these terms move to right side. So I will be getting minus 3, the 1 becomes minus 1. The 3 times minus 1 is basically minus 3. You move to right side, becomes plus 3. So obviously your mu is minus 1 because first and last term will be cancelled off. So now to get the A, just substitute into the third equation. 2A plus A times lambda is minus 1 equals to 4 plus 2. The mu is minus 1. Therefore, from here, The left hand side is basically A, then right hand side 4 minus 2, that is 2. So that is the A value. Now, after solve the first part, you need to find the position vector of the intersection points. Intersection points is basically either from R1 or R2. So now I can just use the R2. Okay, so now from R2. Okay, my R2 needs mu. That means I will replace my mu by minus 1. So my mu by minus 1. Therefore, my R2 equals to minus 3 minus mu and then minus 1 plus mu. Oh, sorry, minus 1 plus 2 mu, 4 plus 2 mu. Then here you will be getting minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. Minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. 4 minus 2 is 2. Okay, so here, look at the question, position vector of the intersection point. So here I will just write position vector. of the intersection point. Equals to negative 2, negative 3, and 2. So that's all for the question. So done for this question. Now, next question, 11. Use a substitution 2x equals to tangent theta to find the exact value of this integration. Give your answer in the form a plus b, a, sorry, a plus b pi, where a and b are rational numbers. Okay, so now, first of all, 2x, probably I copy the integration first, 0 to half, these two are the limits, 12 bracket, 12 over square of 1 plus 4x squared. And now 2x is tangent theta. So now my x will be half theta, half tangent theta. Okay, so when you are given substitution method, right? Use substitution means that you have to apply substitution method. So what we need to do is, instead of dx, you change your d data. So now I will differentiate dx d data equals to half. Differentiate tangent theta is second squared theta. And then from here, my dx, okay, so my dx is going to be half second squared theta 
D data. But then we look at the x here, you are given half tangent data is x. Therefore, from here, I don't have the expression of x. I don't have the expression of second square data in terms of x. I only have tangent data. So what I need to do is I use the identity. 1 plus tangent square a equals to second square a. That means now my dx is half of 1 plus tangent square theta. So now from here, from the first one, my tangent theta is 2x. So which means tangent squared theta, it will be 2x squared. Square of 2x, that is 4x squared. So I will write this as half of 1 plus 4x squared later on. Okay, so now i got to write the d data at the back. So I have found my dx. This is my dx. Okay, then from here, I have to get the limits as well. When x equals to 0, okay, lower limit, that means 0 is tangent theta. So your theta is 0. Then when x equals to half, so half, okay, now look at here, 2x equals to tangent theta. So 2 times half equals to tangent theta. That means now tangent theta is 1. So when tangent theta is 1, your theta is pi over 4. So I found two limits. So now what I need to do is I will just change the limits first. From 0 to half, right, becomes 0 to pi over 4. So 0 to pi over 4. Rewrite the half. I'll uh, rewrite the 12. Sorry, 12. The dx I will change to half 1 plus. Okay, so I better change everything to tangent. I don't, I don't use this. That means I will change it to tangent. Right, so means that now I will get 1 plus tangent squared theta d theta over 1 plus, okay, 4x squared is actually tangent squared. So tangent squared theta and squared. So obviously from here, this bracket can be cancelled off, right? You, the denominator still have 1 plus tangent squared theta. The 12 and half you can simplify become 6. So the 6 can be factorized. So it means that now I will be getting equals to 6 integrate 0 to pi over 4, 1 over 1 plus tangent squared theta d theta. So now look at this formula or this identity. So 1 plus tangent squared is basically second squared. Okay, so I will change to second squared. So 6 integrates 0 to pi over 4. 1 over second squared theta. D theta. And you must understand that 1 over cos theta is second theta. So if I move down the cos, I mean I interchange the cos with the second. So which means 1 over second theta is basically my cos theta. So here becomes 6 integrate 0 to pi over 4 cos squared theta d theta. So when we need to integrate cos squared, now we have to apply the double angle formula. Cos 2a is 2 cos squared a minus 1. Therefore, get this as a subject by moving the minus 1 to the left side. So cos squared a, 2 cos squared a is basically 1 plus cos 2a. And now I need to get cos squared a only. So cos squared a will be half of 1 plus cos 2a. Okay, then you compare. a is basically my theta. That means now here, this integration is basically 6 integrate from 0 to pi over 4. Then 
then half bracket 1 plus cos 2 theta. So the half can be taken out and combined with 6. It becomes two, uh, 3. So now integrate pi 0 to pi. one plus cos two data d data so six times half is basically three okay so three now to integrate one with respect to data that is data integrate cos two data with respect to data that is sine integrate cos is positive sine remain two data over two then limits from zero to pi over four then from here replace the data by pi over 4. So I will get 3 bracket pi over 4 plus half. I take out this over 2. So sine 2 over 4 pi minus when the data is 0. So everything is 0. So from here, I will get 3 times pi over 4 plus half. Sine 2 over 4 pi is basically 1. Okay, so at last, I will be getting the answer 3 over 4 pi plus 3 over 2. Now let's check the question first. You need to get a plus b pi. So it means that now I just need to rearrange. This is 3 over 2 plus 3 over 4 pi. So we have soft for this question. Okay, so done for the whole paper and also comes to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. P please like the video and subscribe to the channel and also share this channel with your friends if you enjoy watching my videos. Okay, and also stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Thank you everyone. Bye.